So I want to tell you about a really cool app. Well, I think it's really cool for editing OpenStreetMap. It's called Every Door, um, made by my friend Ilya a few years ago. Um, and it's really good. I don't think I am excited. I wasn't initially. I was like, I'm used to the standard way of recording, where I go with GPS and taking loads of photos. Going back to the computer, well, eventually when I want to, going back to the computer, using JOSM, sometimes using ID Editor on my big computer screen. But Every Door is an app on your phone. I think it just is caught up with where OpenStreetMap is, that we update the data fast. I'd originally used it for shopping centres, but it's good for anywhere there's lots of detail, like here in industrial estate with a few businesses. I can go on Every Door. I can see live what shops are on there, download the data really quick and see in the point. I can see all the detail like opening times, is it wheelchair accessible? Because every door understands the tagging, it's not just this open key value that kind of JOSM encourages. Um, it's the main ones, it encourages you to put more detail about the shops, put the address or the phone number if you've got time to do that. Um, so I haven't really used it much, but I'm getting into it, especially in Dundee. Um, when I'm working in the city centre, I can go out on a lunch break. I can spend five minutes or less adding five shops. Um, there's loads of detail in the city centre that needs adding. So I don't have to be scared with every door. I can quickly go on. Sometimes I can just add one shop or I can add a whole street. Um, maybe I'm sat somewhere in a bar or a cafe. It's really good for that. Every door actually has like four modes that I need to look through. Um, I want to go in depth on this video to that, so I'm going to have to think the way to do this because I can't record what I'm doing and show you the screen at the same time. I think I'm going to record a few bits, demonstrate it. I'm not sure if I'm getting the most out of every door, so I might try and look into that a bit more um, and see how I can do more. But I'll film, I'll screen record some bits basically so I can show it here and then I'm going to have to sit indoors somewhere probably warm um, and just try that voiceover tactic of a video to tell you what I'm doing. Um, but every door's great, like you need to try it out. Watch the video, try it out, add something you know that's missing. Even if the point of interest, the business is there, add some detail. I'm sure you'll know more about a business. Um, your local shop even if it's just where you get your groceries anyway enough of that I've got some businesses to walk around and add the detail of um, so I'll show you how to do that so actually I'm first going to show you how to install this um, because I know everyone will ask so you obviously start with on your phone your app um, store so on Android, this is the Google Play Store is the easiest way, but even an Apple Store, search for every door, um, and it should come up probably as a top result, but with this uh, icon that's got the blue background and the little brown door there. Um, and click install, it'll do the pending download thing, um, which we can speed up with Video Magic, of course. Um, or not and then um, it, on Android it pops the shortcut automatically you can move it around um, amongst your other apps that you use on a day-to-day -day basis open it up it wants location permission of course and that's fine because we're editing OpenStreetMap data it makes sense uh, straight away click those three lines in the top left to again the configuration click open street map account and click login with OAuth and this takes you to the openstreetmap.org website um, if you're not familiar with OAuth type sign-ins you use your same account there but only openstreetmap.org keeps your knows your password but you authorize the everydoor account to know who you are and programming magic kind of does that uh, and you're now logged in and you can look around the map and plan where you go so I was going to plan to go to a shopping centre to make it easy uh, but didn't end up going to that one I'll show you where I did go so 
So yeah, I found a seat in the Overgate Shopping Centre because it's quite handy. The shopping centres you can use this app without being right next to it. Um, and you click the download button first, um, which is the left one at the bottom, the arrow pointing down. And in the middle, I'm on the cup icon, which is just shops and cafe type things. And you can see there's already a lot of shops mapped here, but I kind of walked along and saw what could be mapped. And I saw there was a Starbucks uh, kind of opposite Toy Town on the first level. So I kind of panned around um, where the black marker is and clicked the blue add button. Um, and I can just type in, um, Yeah, I can type in that it's a coffee shop called Starbucks. Um, actually, every door is quite clever and told me that there was one uh, 19 metres away from here, which I hadn't spotted because uh, the shopping centre is so dense. Um, so I ended up not saving this later. Um, just going back out of that. Um, then I looked around what other shops were there. I did have to walk away from my seat because uh, Leaf Collection and Subway were also mapped. Um, I walked along and I saw that there was a gift shop. Um, this gift shop was called Scottish Tradition. So straight away, every door was asking me for the name um, and it showed me a number of other options that I can put in here. So I could do it with wheelchair for, um, access, yes, because there were nice steps. Um, and I put that it was on level one. This was important in the shopping centre and that would have helped me avoid me getting confused. Um, that's actually, you can click the filter icon in the top right to filter it to only show you the top level ones. Um, and I put in a clothing shop. It was quite simple, called Be Inspired. Um, again, level one, I think is important, but I didn't know all that information, the other questions it asked. Uh, but spotted there was another duplicate there. Uh, this is where I actually realized how I had got the Starbucks on. They were just slightly further down. Um, and so I decided to go back into Starbucks and I um, marked it. So Starbucks, scroll down, click the does not exist red button and that kind of deletes it as so that was gone. What's helpful then here is I click the Scottish tradition and on the picture at the top, you can click move and that allows me to kind of drag and replace that black marker because it's between Starbucks and Be Inspired. Indoor mapping's tricky um, because there's so many things um, and that's why every door helps. The numbers here are where every door is shown data and because I've got the filter on just for level one, it's not highlighting all those other shops on the other lines. Um, so I can look around and see things there. Um, yeah. You can see, also see at the bottom is another way to select it if I just think something like the opening times have changed or if I know what the shop used to be um, and it's since changed its name. The blue dotted line is kind of where I've been walking, although it gets a bit confused indoors. Um, and I wanted to add another marker. This was an information point. Um, so it's tourist information because that was a customer service desk. Um, it didn't really have information desk, which is a value. So I was able to type it in there. Um, I'm pretty sure that's a way people map information desks. And it's on level one. It's by the escalators, but mapping escalators is a bit tricky. Um, through this, at least I don't know how to, and that's detailed in tool mapping. 
is we're just making key points and important uh, points such as the defibrillator that's by that information desk on level one and that's kind of the basics of that um, there was also an office along there uh, you'll see the video of kind of what this looked like as well along by um, I think it's a bit better if I move on from um, yes yeah, so because the Overgate shopping centre was already quite mapped um, we'll just go back to where I was on that industrial estate and show the example of the the every door mapping that I did there so I once again downloaded the data and you can see I was looking at um, a little industrial estate here, some small units, um, and so I just got my bearings. I tapped on the bottom on the house mode briefly um, because I noticed actually 12 was oddly done, and that's um, unit 12A, I think it was. Yeah, I put 12A in there. You can see 12Bs around the corner. I think they've done that. Maybe number 13 wasn't selling well enough. Uh, common thing in house numbers didn't know it happened in industrial units but that's why we actually go up and survey um, and there was a sign on that place um, and I put a note I couldn't remember how to tag it as vacant but I put that in um, I'm going to speed up some of this video because um, it was all pretty much the same kind of engineering type um, businesses I wasn't completely sure what they were Saturdays aren't the best time to go around these sort of sites because they don't advertise open times and it wasn't clear even if they do uh, whether they're still in business or not because they can kind of look dirty and run down anyway. And this one I actually used the description tag I think to put in, it had a tagline and I thought that might be helpful if people need to know exactly what they do. Um, and this is a good example. Uh, I didn't know how to tag this, but I can type in brewery and I get some options. I decided to craft brew was the best. Um, no opening times because I don't think it's open to the public, but the name in there is important if people are maybe doing a collection of delivery or um, delivering supplies for the malts and such. Um, and if it does, have opening times that people know about they can always edit that now that it's easy to find now save at the bottom of the screen and then I'll speed up again as I said it was lots of kind of car mechanics um, kept typing in that every door of course when you start typing or before you type in the search it does keep your most recently one done ones at the top um, but yeah that was pretty much the same and I got those bits of the industrial estate done so I then walked further to find some more simple things to map. Just as an aside to what I'm filming, every door encouraged me to walk a bit further um, from home kind of in an odd direction because I was like there's some shops that I can map but I wanted to come to this place full of seagulls that might be because here is um clark's bakery which i had heard about it's 24 hours seven days a week open as a bakery which i think great i think it's kind of a um what do you call a legend of uh of dundee so i've heard many people tell but can actually find definite information online um i should have looked at uh, open street map a bit more closely because it's mapped, as every door said, it's been mapped for seven years. Um, so it was good for me to check. I possibly should have done it by um, by around lunchtime and uh, it'd have got a Scooby-Doo snack or maybe I should have done it at 2 p 2 a.m. just because it's open. Um, but yeah, I checked it. Doesn't have opening times for me to add, but it does have the tagline the home of the 24-hour bakery so i guess that means it still does open 24 hours um let me know if you think i should check out 
when it's open by visiting in those times. Um, yeah, so a few more things ticked off by every door. Um, I'm not quite sure how I, how you can confirm to every door that stuff's mapped, um, but I was able to say it's wheelchair accessible, so that that edits it and that confirms that um, it is still here and it's mapping. The estate by the bakery, you can see a lot of these are outlined in yellow on every door. So I click to communications. It tells me it's not been edited in seven years and uh, that's because it's now a food shop of some kind. I was trying to figure out what kind. Um, but it's basically, I, th I thought there was a food shop that um, varied. Uh, this is a bakery and a butcher which is hard to tag. Um, it's called the butcher and the baker to make sense. Um, and I might speed up these bits, but it's just that industrial estate. Uh, you'll see also Clark's Bakery, I was able to put, was also on there, not edited for seven years. So I was able to add the opening times, uh, which shows that someone's actually surveyed it recently. Um, but I'll speed that all up. Uh, this video is long, so that might have been enough for you to see every door. I've not really used that, a couple of features of it, um, but I've got a video that I'm going to edit and put together. Uh, I think it's a lot more snappy and more interesting, which will show some more of every door. So help, hopefully um, that will be engaging and more learning. The rest of this video just being... Um, being a quick overview to, to show more of bits I've edited.